bookworms welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new my name is Auntie Nisha Lachey I am Mrs. Moody Reader and today we are doing the first set of prompts for June 2021 box office -a -thon. So if by chance you are happening to stumble upon this video and you do not know what Box Office Athon is, Box Office Athon is a readathon that I am hosting in the month of June 2021 and it is based off of my Box Office TBR game. So if you again are not familiar with it, I will leave a link below to the announcement video that has all of the rules and all the information about what's going on this month. I will also leave a link to my Box Office TBR playlist so that you can see the full rules of the game and see a couple rounds of me playing the game but today we are kicking off box office a -thon. I am going to be doing the first two rolls hopefully just two we don't get any penalty rolls but I will be doing the first two rolls um, of box office a -thon to get you your first prompts that go for the first week of June so um, just a little bit of housekeeping because I typically start box office a -thon, um, where I left off as far as the board it's a round board so there's no finish line um, but I just start where I left off, but because we are starting this fresh, I'm going to be starting at the starting space. Also, I will not be using my tokens like I typically use. If you know how I play my game, then you know what the tokens stand for. I will not be collecting tokens with the prompts this round, but I will be, um, noting the number that I roll on the two six sided die because I use that number to get myself points or possibly lose points if I don't read the books. So I will be using those because once I get to 100 points, the original plan was that I was going to be able to buy myself some more books because I am on a book buying ban, but I did buy quite a few like almost 200 books before right before I started my book buying ban so I have changed that up and I have decided that anytime I hit 100 points on my game instead of buying myself books I will be doing a giveaway and buying you guys books so we'll talk about that more probably in July because in July I will go back to playing my game as normal so I will add up my points for May and for June so we'll talk about that more then but just to let you know, like I said, I will not be collecting my tokens, but I will be collecting um, the points so that I can either add them to my total or subtract them from my total if I do or don't read the books. So I think that's all there is. I think the announcement video said everything. So yeah, it is raining and thunderstorming here. So I do apologize if you can hear the rain and the thunder. It is a perfect day for reading. So I will be doing that after I'm done filming and editing this video. But we are gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so I've already shuffled the flop cards and we are gonna go ahead and do roll number one. Roll number one is a seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fantasy, which is great because I have a lot of fantasy to read this month. But let's see, so we are going to shuffle all of our prompts and pick one. Um, and fantasy is fantasy and sci-fi and dystopian, magical realism, everything that falls underneath that, those genres. And so we have, it's not going to focus, but it is medium paced. Okay, so for our first roll, we rolled a seven and landed on fantasy sci-fi. And like I said, fantasy sci-fi includes all subgenres. So dystopian, magical realism, speculative fiction, all of that is included under um, fantasy and sci-fi and for the prompt we got medium pace so these pacing prompts i have a fast pace medium pace and slow pace these are based on story graph because on story graph um, books are categorized by the pace and it is a user generated pace so when you go to leave a review you can rate if it's fast medium or slow um and that's what kind of shows up on the listing so for that we are going to go to story graph um i'm glad that it's a fantasy and sci-fi because i have quite a few of those and i'm pretty sure one of these that i have is going to fit into that so i am going to put a screen recording um up here so you guys can see my story graph and we are going to see what is considered fast medium and slow so what I'm doing, so I'm 
my story graph I'm going to go to my tags and I'm gonna to go to own physical TBR and then the beautiful thing about story graph is that you can filter because as you can see I have 565 books um, on my physical TBR um, so I can filter it by pace and so we need a medium pace and then I can also filter it by genre and so we are going to add all of the so we'll have dystopian fantasy uh, magical realism science fiction, uh, speculative fiction, and I think that's it. Yep, that's everything. So we're going to include all of those genres and um, that's it. So we're going to filter, which still gives us 81 books. So I'm just going to scroll through very quickly. So the whole Inheritance Trilogy would work. Um, but that's not on my TBR. So I'm trying to find something that I'm currently, I'm already planning on reading this month. Um, so Rando Sando is, ha ha ha, there we go. So we have A Torch Against the Night, which I'm planning on reading this month. Cemetery Boys, which I'm also planning on reading this month. Um, and what else? A Dark and Hollow Star, which I'm planning on reading this month. And if the Kingdom of Copper is on here, then the City of Brass should probably be on here as well. Getting in the ninth, so pretty much most of the books that I'm planning on reading this month. Um, the Throne of Glass series, then most of them. So I have quite a few options. So basically any of the fantasy sci-fis that I'm planning on reading this month. Um, just to keep things interesting and easy, I am going to go with ah, I'm gonna go with Cemetery Boys because um I'm already planning on reading it this month I have my whole pile over here um and this is one that I will definitely be reading this month um which hopefully all of these I will definitely be reading but I am reading this because I want to read more queer books in June so this one does have queer representation um also this is the book for my team Team Hades not my team, I'm not the team captain, but my team, Team Hades, um, for the Shelf Space Olympics Readathon. So I will definitely be reading it for that as well so I can get my double points. So I will choose Cemetery Boys. Alrighty, so on to roll number two. That is a 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is our action square. Action is for historical fiction and classics, which I wasn't planning on reading either one of those <laughs> this month. So let's see what we end up getting out of here. We have, oh. Oh, my camera is just not focusing on any of this, but we have an ebook. Okay, so for roll number two, we rolled a 10 and we landed on an action square, which is my historical fiction and classics. And the prompt for that one was an ebook. My camera does not want to focus on these cards, but it's okay. It was an ebook. This one, definitely not part of my plans. I have. I don't have it. the only ebook that I'm planning on reading this month is The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which is definitely not historical fiction or a classic. Um, I do have one that would count as historical fiction, but I have it as a graphic novel. So let's go back to Story Graph and see what we can find that is not going to weigh me down too much. So let's see what I have. So I am going to again. Um, do a screen recording so you guys can see what I'm seeing. Okay, so what we're gonna do on this one, instead of going to my own physical TBR, I do have, um, I have my own ebook TBR, but then I also have some Kindle Unlimiteds. 
that I have access to and I have Kindle Unlimited wish list and I have access to books on Scribd. So okay so I looked around and it seems like there is no way to search by the tags and the reason I was trying to do this is because I have multiple tags that include ebooks so again I have the ebooks that I own um, and then I also have um, I think I have like nine or ten books checked out on my Kindle Unlimited and then I also have a Kindle Unlimited wish list. So as I come across other books on Kindle Unlimited that I'm interested in, I will add it to the wish list instead of having to take one off of that's checked out to put that one in its place. And then I also have access to books on Scribd. So I am going to just kind of go through here. So we're going to search. So I will st I'll start with Kindle Unlimited because I do want to get some of those off. Um, and we are going to filter this by historical fiction or classics. And I'm, I don't think I, ha I know I don't have any classics. Um, I know I don't have any classics on Kindle Unlimited. Maybe I have historical. We shall see. I only have 10 on here. Okay. So I do have, I have two on here. Um, and they're both, they're similar, but they're by different authors. So these are uh, genealogical mysteries. And so in case you didn't know, researching my family history is my other biggest hobby next to reading. I've been researching my family history for over 20 years. Um, and so I'm very interested in genealogy. And I started coming across these genealogical mysteries that I wanted to read. Um, I really want to read Hiding the Past by Nathan Dylan Goodwin. I'm actually on his like um, email, his newsletter. Um, that's so why I get newsletters from him and everything. But this particular book, there is a novella um, that goes with it. Hmm. So I could do that because then it wouldn't add too much to my TBR. So this is 256 pages. So yeah, Hiding the Past is the one that I really want to read. I do want to read In the Blood as well. But I want to read Hiding the Past. But Hiding the Past has a um, novella that goes with it. And I do own the novella. Um, I got it. Yeah, I own it on my ebook. On my Kindle. Sorry. I got it um, for being on his newsletter. And that's how I heard about this particular series that he has and it's a series I really want to get into so I'm going to choose that so I'm going to choose the asylum which is the novella that goes with the forensic genealogist series by Nathan Dylan Goodwin and it's only 93 pages so boom that is what I will be reading for this prompt so that worked out a lot better than I thought it would because I'm like I really don't want to add a whole nother book when I have all of these books this month that I'm already planning on reading for my Riley Sager reading vlog and then all the books that I'm planning on reading for the shelf space readathon so yeah so I'm going to add that to the asylum like I said it's only 93 pages but um the other thing too that's pretty cool about shelf space is if you read a book so if the asylum fits one of the other shelf space readathon prompts I can use it as another book that I've read for that prompt um, I won't submit it as my first book because my first book is going to be whichever one I read so I can get the points for the book length and everything but I think you get like an extra 20 points if you read any other books um oh no I can just read this for it doesn't fit a prompt too because you get 20 books for 20 books 20 points for any book that you read that doesn't fit any any prompts as well so I will get an extra 20 points for shelf space for this one so I will be doing that so those are the first two rolls those are my first two picks um in the comment section I will try to find some other recommendations um as far as medium pace um SFF I will leave some recommendations for that um, historical fiction or classic on ebook is I guess pretty subjective because I'm pretty sure you can find every single one of them on ebook it's just a matter of what you have access to on ebook I will leave some um, recommendations for sci-fi fantasy that are medium paced like I said I will go back through my story graph and leave a couple recommendations if you have any books in mind that you want to read for that prompt and you are wondering if story graph says that it's medium paced if you know that it's medium paced or um, 
someone else has like reviewed it and said it's medium paced then go with it you know do you in this readathon but if you're just wondering and you want me to look it up on storygraph i will happily do that for you so just let me know in the comments what you guys are planning on reading for these two prompts and like i said i will pin a post that has some recommendations i will take these two prompts that we picked this time and i have a separate bag for them because i want us to try to get to as many prompts as possible so we're doing good y'all that are playing hard with me we're doing good we don't have any bonus prompts bonus rolls or anything like that so we're off to a good start i'm really really excited about it so again i will leave some recommendations in the uh comment section below let me know in the comments what you are reading for these prompts if these prompts work for any books you are already planning on reading in june and again if you would like me to check any books that you are planning on reading is especially for that medium paced one i will be happy to look it up on storygraph for you so there's that. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already so that you can continue participating with this readathon. Um, please do not forget, I will have, um, we will have our first live reading sprint next Saturday. I, I would tell you the date if I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> It is Saturday, June 5th. It will be from 6 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern time. Again, for those of you who are interested, I'm interested in being on the sprints with me. I will be reaching out to you in the next day or two. I'm in the process of setting up and scheduling all the sprints so that they are all just ready to go and I will get links sent out to you guys. So definitely join us on the live reading sprints. Um, again, that will be kind of my push to get through more reading. So yeah, so again, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.